that was a recent controversy online. I know you don't spend all your time online about uh, Kevin Hart mm -hmm. uh, wearing a dress in the SNL skit. And Dave Chappelle spoke about that as a comedian. Black actors are always, you know, being asked to wear dresses. Have you ran into that? And what do you think about that whole Illuminati theory that people put out there about that? Well, you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that softball question. Uh, it, it's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. We all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. Right. I'm still not going to join, but I respect it a little more. All right. Uh, how, how do you handle that? Because they put your name in the press with a lot of rumors and a lot of situations that they try to put on mm -hmm. Cat Williams. Do you feel ever the need to, like, I got to go defend this and, and put out a story about <laughs> who I am? Or do you just let that kind of like roll off your back? when? Well, as you can see, I've let it all go for quite uh, some time. And a lot of that is just based upon the fact that I don't really know how to complain because all of the people that I ever looked up to had to go through it too. So I know how much they talked about Martin Luther King and I know what they end up doing to him. I know this same story about Jesus and a few of my uncles. So now I know that if your mouth is really, really big and you try to tell the truth for a living and you like to air people out, hatred is coming your way. I didn't know it was going to be this type of hatred, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm concrete in all things uh, because of he who strengthens me. So that doesn't mean I always make the right decisions, but I am going to stand by what I stand for. And um, I'm only continuing to do it because I was looking for somebody who was doing it instead of me. And I just must have missed them, you know what I mean? So yeah. at some point you have to figure out what example are you trying to be. If it's just going to be you going to make it and live happily ever after and go off into the sunset, then that's what that is. Otherwise, you're on the front line of this battle. And those of us who understand that um, understand that this is a part of what comes with it. All right, last question. Scary Movie yeah. 5, April 12th. Everybody's going to go see that. Including um, me. Where? where what else does Cat Williams have come out? We're going to see you on stage, do stand-up. What's, what's up next with Cat Williams? Well, you know, the best thing for me is when I'm able to do the uh, movies. And then, uh, you know, if I do four, mo four months of doing movies, then I'm able to go to stand-up. And that's a nice, healthy pace for me. So um, right now, as long as Scary Movie 5 goes to number one, then that'll be our green light that we can do the movies. And uh, if that's what the people want, then that's what I'll do. And if not, then uh, we always um, have that stage. That's what's up, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate you, brother. All right. unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great 
product here and as a fan base we love the attention that you spend on the guests we we love how much work you've done how well you know them how prepared you are the same things that we liked about you in football <laughs> you brought that on over to here and that's uh, why it resonates and the reason I had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told you know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here and lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in? <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be fr was going to be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick points. You mean in Hollywood they cast a 5 foot 5 black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I didn't know he, he could... shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that all oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was. Sir, no one. Why no? He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he, what? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never no, funny, no. no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines. I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you.
What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then he was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious.